The reason your Jurassic World Evolution 2 parks don't look as good as you want them to is because you are committing one or multiple of these cardinal park building sins. Over 97,000 of you think I'm a pretty good park builder because I'm not funny and you're definitely not here for my skillful aisle gameplay. <laughs> My channel is mostly about building inspiration for Jurassic World Evolution. That's why you're here and that's what I'm gonna help with. A lot of comments I get on my channel are, I wish I could build parks like you. And you totally can, if you avoid these top 5 building mistakes that I'm going to talk about in this video. Actually, I'm gonna talk about 6. I'm gonna throw in a bonus in the hopes of earning a like and a subscribe. Hello everyone, thanks for checking out this video and let's just dive right into it with the first mistake. Noodle Path. Did you know that my channel used to be called Crazy Path Lady? Well, it's because I did some, um, uh, well, some crazy things with Path. A mistake I see people making is just pulling stretches of Path from one building to the next, one exhibit to the next, like a game of connect the dots. Leave that strategy to your challenge mode parks or your campaign mission parks. In Sandbox, you want to approach it differently. In Sandbox, you want to make wide promenades and use different path colors to make your guest sections look more interesting, which is what I call path flair. Just a little line of a different path color can really make everything come across as more purposeful. The second mistake ties into that and it's too much efficiency. Efficiency sounds like a good thing, and it is, but too much of anything is never good. I see park builders trying to cram as much as possible into every single park. I'm talking getting as many species of dinosaurs in there and spamming amenities. Every single bit of the map needs to serve a purpose. Any area in a park might count towards one of three different types of purposes. The facilities, where you create your dinosaurs and you want to keep this as small as possible, unless you incorporate it into the overall theme of your park. The exhibits, where you house your dinosaurs and your amenities, like your shops and hotels. We're all very focused on getting the most out of all of this. However, none of these purposes necessarily make your park look good. To fix this, you need to waste space. You might be afraid to use this tip, but it's going to have a big impact on your park building. Now, when I say waste space, I mean create areas that don't serve any of those three functions. I already mentioned this a little bit in the first tip, but like make wide promenades, for example. Also make little gardens and decorative ponds. You might be tempted to turn every little bit into an exhibit, especially because we still feel like the maps we got are still too small. But unless your goal is to make an all species park, don't try to cram as many dinosaurs into a map as you can. Beautiful scenery, unobstructed by tall fences and public squares with seating and decor that the game says you don't technically need are going to make your parks look even better. If you're hesitant to apply this tip overall, at least use it for your park entry area. I think that if you do, you'll convince yourself that you can apply it more often with great effect. Next mistake, zero attention to detail. This is a mistake people make when they are trying to hurry. But in a perfect park, there are no boring parts. Give every section of your park a little bit of attention and a little or a lot of decoration. Parks usually have the most wow factor when seen from a bird's eye view. And from that perspective, the little details don't even stand out. So you might overlook them. You might not even think to add them. But when you get down on the ground and take care to create details that your guests would experience, your park becomes much more enjoyable for you as well when you are using the new first person mode. A great park is more than just making it look great from the helicopter. My building style has definitely changed going from Jurassic World Evolution 1 to Jurassic World Evolution 2. In the first game, I was super focused on making my parks look great from a helicopter point of view because that's how we mostly play the game. But in Jurassic World Evolution 2, I've really learned to pay attention to the details and to make things look special from the ground perspective as well. Mistake number four, flat parks. Since the first big update, loading into a perfectly flattened sandbox map is a welcome option that we have available to us now. But this feature also makes it that much easier to fall into the flat park pitfall. If you want to elevate your park build, you need to take it to the next 
level. I have high expectations for Astop. Fix this mistake by using elevation within your park. Create multiple levels like plateaus to separate areas and create visual interest. The overall look of your park is going to be much more dynamic if you sink some areas down or raise some of them up. Now I know, I know that this means you'll lose real estate to the horrible, the awful, terrain constraints. But like I said in tip two, you can afford to waste space, on most maps at least. On bigger maps you can take it to more of an extreme, go for a smaller elevation differences on smaller maps and possibly use the hills as part of the exhibit so you don't feel like you are being too wasteful. I'm still playing the game unmodded, if you are using the terrain mod you definitely need to make use of the extreme terrain editing and create some cliffs within your parks with nice vistas. The second to last mistake that I'll be discussing in this video are plain fences. Most of the time we create an exhibit like this. Just a rectangular or random shape lined with a single fence. That's it. Of course we then decorate that exhibit, but it's not just about what goes inside the exhibit. The shape of the enclosure and the fence that surrounds it are a design opportunity that you should utilize. Plan out a more interesting shape beforehand considering attractions like viewing galleries, towers and tours. Consider that an exhibit could be separated into three areas, a regular daytime exhibit, a nighttime enclosure and possibly an educational stadium. Instead of having just a single fence, use double fencing and create reinforcements by making small squares with fence at set intervals. Use a mix of concrete walls and wire fencing so you dictate where your guests can look into the enclosure, pretending that they can of course. Don't run a path right by the fence, but instead pull the path back a little bit and line it with planters so stupid guests can't touch the electrical wires or stick their hand into a carnivore's enclosure. Now obviously these things don't actually happen to your guests in the game, how awesome would it be if that did happen anyway. But when you're trying to make the best looking parks, you should consider some realism elements that the game neglects. I have a series of exhibit speed builds on the channel with more specific examples, so you can check those out after you are done with this video for some inspiration when it comes to building your exhibits. And now for the bonus mistake, fix included. By the way, if you've been enjoying this video and these tips are helpful to you, give the video a like and of course subscribe for more park building tips, tricks and inspiration. The final big mistake, no plan. This is a mistake that I make constantly. I go in and I just start building. No plan, no reference, just armed with nothing but my plucky can-do attitude and proclivity for fancy pathwork. You see this happening live during my streams, which you should definitely join by the way. It's not a wrong way to play, There, there is no wrong way to play, but the perks will be better if you go in with a plan and look up some references beforehand to at least inspire you. I think my exhibit speed builds are a good example of how how much better I build when I do plan ahead. For these builds I sketch out little blueprints beforehand and it just leads to a lot more detail and realism and you can just see that a lot more thought went into it. When I do think to come up with a plan beforehand or I'm struggling with inspiration I particularly like looking up images of urban planning, public squares and public parks and architecture for museums, universities and libraries. There is a ton of stuff out there by truly creative people that can inspire your next exhibit, your next guest area or your next full park layout. And of course I hope that my parks provide a ton of inspiration for you as well. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game. Enjoy.